Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Thursday, the 13th of February, uh, 2020. And this is the Helm Dev Weekly Call. Um, so as usual, we'll start off with announcements. Then we'll go to stand up for uh, core maintainers, then for anyone in the community. And uh, then we'll look, end up with the discussion topics. So to kick off, let's have a look at uh, the announcements for today. And yay! Uh, Helm 3.1.0 has been just released by uh, Mr. Matt Farina, so uh, thank you very much indeed, Matt. Is there anything you'd like to add? Uh, not too much. I guess I'll say uh, we could probably get a 3.1.1 out next week because <laughs> we got a few things that can go into that. We already know. Um, and then remember, we're shooting for a release candidate for 3.2 for March 11th, so we can get it out before KubeCon. So keep that in mind as we work on everything else. Okay. Thank you, Matt. Uh, any other announcements? Okay. All good. So let's kick off into the stand-ups, and uh, we can kick off with you, Matt. Which Matt? Me? <laughs> or me. All the Matt. Matt. You, you had the floor. <laughs> Too many mats. But cut a release. Um, and besides that, I've been doing a little issue triaging and, and bug fixing and things like that. That's, that's about it. Just the same old stuff. Uh, so I'll pass it off to Matt uh, Fisher. Uh, it's going to be one of those today. Um, so I'm going to simultaneously. Uh, so I basically am doing more or less the same thing, only a little bit less than Matt Farina in this case. Uh, I was um, going through the 3.1.0 uh, <clears throat> release timeline, um, helping out with Matt Farina and with um, everyone else that was kind of helping out with the release. So thank you with that. Um, basically going through the, the release milestone and making sure what things that we needed to get in for 3.1.0 were in there because there was a lot in the 3.1.0 time lot or time frame for this time. So uh, a lot of things had to be punted over to 3.2.0. So we we're just trying to figure out which ones could we reasonably punt over to the next release and which ones we had to get done for this release. Um, so a little bit of PR triage, uh, doing some uh, support in this or in the issue queue, and then also doing some uh, PR reviews with the 3.1.0 release. So that's what I've been helping out with. Um, this next week, <laughs> you are running a super serious show. Seriously, I need another coffee. Um, yeah, that's basically it for the, or for the week. Uh, going forward, it's going to be towards the 3.2.0 release. Um, so I'm going to be taking a look at reviewing some things over there that I um, intentionally delayed until now. Let's go to Adam. Uh, hey, everybody. Uh, not too much to report today. Um, just been trying to help out where I can get back into uh, the world of Helm. Um, yeah, I especially don't have a sarcastic bone in my body. Um, go, Taylor. Neither you nor Martin have sarcastic bones in your body. No one would ever say that. Um, anyway, so I uh, would have mostly been working on my talk that I'm giving next week um, at DevOps Days, DevOps Days Guadalajara. I've uh, been helping out and watching Paul do some terrible, no good, awful, very bad things with, uh, with post render. Um, and uh, Anyway, so that's, a, that's all I've been doing is most of that talk. So I'm going to be giving that talk next week, and then I'll be back into to pulling in some of the issues and things to, to work on in the weeks after. So that is it for me. And oh, Karina. Hey, Taylor, have you thought about writing up about post render on the Helm blog? Uh, I wrote up a big doc about it that actually I should go hit merge on now that you released 3.1. Um, and I think that's sufficient for now. I'll write a blog post after I am done having written 3 billion talks in the past four weeks. <laughs> Love, Taylor. I, I thought you were supposed to conclude that with, but if you wanted to write one, Mr. Farina. PRs are accepted. OK, sorry, I got totally distracted. Let's pass it off to Scott. 
Cool. Uh, <clears throat> I haven't really done very much lately, uh, except for um, I've been, well, uh, very recently prepping for doing this, um, doing a, a preview talk of um, what we're going to do at KubeCon. Sort of. I, I think uh, I may take uh, Paul's suggestion and perhaps just do kind of a build your own adventure with the audience at the New York City Kubernetes meetup for a, you know, a demoing Helm 3 with our new actions. I also, um, to Taylor briefly, I would love to try to follow the lead of you all in trying to demo the new post renderer. I think that would be pretty cool. So I'm giving it a shot today, and if it feels smooth and I feel confident, I'll I'll uh, I'll do that tonight. I'll let you all know how it goes. I, I um, have the I have that demo too. I guess thank you, Scott, for reminding me. I do have that demo, Farina, that's out there on my advanced Helm demos. So uh, I have I have not left it completely empty. So was that the one? Yeah, I was going to say uh, Taylor has done a uh, did something, <laughs> and uh, and yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I, I have that, and I'm gonna look at it. Um, <clears throat> Only other thing uh, is I finally got around to pinging people in SIG PM um, about the question I had a few weeks ago regarding the Kubernetes um, Helm repo uh, name spacing and kind of where it should live question. Uh, thanks, uh, Farina, for, <laughs> for suggesting that and then ducking out of the way. Um, I'm going to, uh, I just really need to write that up so it's sensible because if I'm going to mail that question to the mailing list with I really need to give people context and it's kind of a confusing thing to explain. So I haven't done that yet, but I will. And that's it for me. Um, Butcher? Uh, okay, uh, so first KubeCon stuff, um, things seem to be falling into place. We did request a maintainers booth at KubeCon. So uh, as we get closer, um, anybody who feels, uh, we'll, I'll bring it up again in, in a future meeting and people who are interested in uh, signing up to spend some time at the ask a maintainer thing at the uh, booth uh, would be welcome. Uh, that went fabulously well uh, when we did it last time in San Diego, and I think it'd be great to do again. It was a lot of fun, uh, met a lot of really interesting people, heard some awesome Helm success stories, and got some really difficult questions. So it was it was a good time. Um, so uh, so I'll keep you all posted on that. But everything does seem to be move, moving smoothly on all the uh, KubeCon stuff. Um, did so managed hooks did not make it into 3.0, right? Uh, I, I know we started working on it, but I think none of none of us, I, I, I did not finish when I started it. So I've been taking a look at that just a little bit to see if I can add that because it's a forward compatible, it's a backward compatible feature add. So I've been looking at that a little bit to kind of see if I can resurrect the architecture I'd done before. Um, and do that, but it'll be slow going for me because I've got a million things going on. Um, Helm graduation is moving through the process. Um, I think since last week, I don't really have anything to add to that. We basically were shooting for silver on the CII uh, badge. And so that means I've got a security review to finish um, and they're hard. <laughs> they're a lot harder than I thought. <laughs> um, uh, but otherwise, um, if you can, um, we need to fill out the, um, uh, what's the name of that markdown adopters. file? Adopters. Pardon? Adopters, right? Yeah, we need to fill out the adopters.md file with people who are using Helm. Uh, we don't need to have tons, but we need to have kind of a, a, a good sample representation because CNCF requires that and evaluates that as part of their graduation criterion. So if you can jump in there, drop in the name of, uh, of your uh, of, of anyone who's paid you to install Helm for them or use Helm for them, that would be great. Uh, and then the last thing is um, Matt Freina brought to my attention again today that something seems to be wrong with the GPG key I used to sign the last release I did. So I've got to spend some time hunting that down. Um, I suspect I destroyed my key locally and need to refresh it off the Keybase server and then reassign things because uh, I do a lot of GPG coding and sometimes I don't do it very well. So <laughs> I probably broke it myself. Uh, so I think that's it for me. So the main things I'll be looking at uh, continue to be KubeCon related stuff and graduation stuff with managed hooks on the side. Uh, Mark, have you gone yet? No, I'll go. Thank you. Um, right after Fisher, thank you, po um, approved my patch for um, fixing the memory driver for namespaces. I right away posted something, not to annoy him, but maybe it did. 
um, to allow the memory driver to be pre-provisioned. So what you can do now, you can do a Helm list without actually having a cluster. Uh, so that's up for review whenever somebody has time after all the other important stuff goes through. Besides that, I'm working on Cobra for uh, Go completions. I was waiting for 3.1 to be out. I wanted to say that we have uh, that version of completion out in the wild. So now I can post to Cobra. I'm very happy about that. And uh, that's pretty much it on my side. Um, Jacob? Um, I don't have anything today. I've <clears throat> unfortunately, I haven't had time to work on any of my wish list items upstream, but uh, I think I, I'm hoping to compile an experience report from rolling out Helm at a larger organization soon. Um, I think I can narrow it down to like two or three GitHub issues that are causing 90% of our problems. So uh, that's it for me. Is anyone else still waiting? Um, have all the cores gone? Yeah, looking at the list, it looks like all the cores have gone. Okay, so I'll just wrap up. Um, so uh, this week, bits and pieces, um, been doing some uh, reviews and uh, doing some triaging. And also, I've just got back again to the um, putting in the cube context and the uh, cube file to pass it through from the migration down into the uh, utility library. So um, I've just found found a bug in that. So I've just pushed something in the utility library on that. So hopefully get that in over the next uh, week or so, um, uh, because it'll be handy for, for migration. Um, and in addition to that, we, we will look to, uh, I'm talking to Mayor, so uh, we put together something that I'll send on for, um, uh, to consider, um, the utility to be um, brought into the Helm uh, org. So that's so the bits that were brought up last week. So thanks to uh, Freena for finding the license was missing and uh, Rob Data to read me on that to uh, specify their V2 uh, functions. So yeah, that should work on that. Uh, apart from that, I think that's about it for me. Okay, so I'm just gonna, before I open it up to other people in the community, um, I think Scott wants to say a word. Um, Scott Morgan, you have the floor, Scott. Oh, thanks. Uh, hey, folks. Um, yeah, I had a PR that's been kicking around for a while uh, to to enable uh, strict linting during template time. Uh, we use Helm just as a template engine. We don't use it for for actually deploying services. And yeah, I just wanted to kind of figure out how I can nudge this PR along. I think um, it has like 80 plus test fixture changes because I updated the API version and I think that might be scaring people away from the PR. Do you know the number offhand for it? Uh, it's in yeah. the, the seven, yeah, 70, 60. Uh, it's got a question. Why did you update the API versions? Um, because when I, you know, some of the tests, when they do the linting, they'll fail because linting will fail saying, you know, you can't use V1 API with Helm 3. Uh, yes, you can. The yeah. only reason, so um, all charts prior to Helm 3 would have used um, API version V1. <clears throat> so we still have to be able to render those charts in in uh, Helm 3. The only reason you'd update the API version to V2 is if you're using specific um, Helm V3 capability around charts. So for example, if your dependencies were put into the chart.yaml file, etc. So otherwise you don't, you wouldn't update the, the uh, API version of the chart. Uh, yeah. Then. Yeah, I think one of the big or one of the big goals that we were trying to shoot for, at least for Helm three, was compatibility, so that you could lint um, older charts that were compiled against Helm two, as well as charts that were compiled against Helm three. So, if that isn't the case, and if you're finding a bug where you have been needing to update over to the newer version for the charts, then perhaps there's some kind of bug 
um, somewhere in the linting where we're not able to lint those older charts. Um, so maybe we should take a look and revisit that, but I can go and take a look at this. Um, let me go ahead and throw this on the 3.2 milestone so we can take a look and review that. Um, and then we can see about next action items for that PR. Does that sound good for you? Yeah, that sounds good. Thanks. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Thanks for that, Scott. Thanks, Matt. Uh, anything else, Scott? Yeah, nothing for me. Okay. Um, anyone else in the community that would like to say a few words? Uh, I don't know if we just start talking or post in the chat, but I had something. Um, so I had like an issue that came up with the chart testing um, where because of like the interaction between dash dash wait and post install, um, if you have something like kind of in post install that it relies on some of the deployments, um, but not all and other deployments depend on it, dash dash wait will make, basically make that fail. Um, I'm trying to figure out if there's like a, a good way to do this without changing code or if it would require a code change to like either add a new uh, type of hook or some other way of still confirming that the chart installed successfully. Taylor, do you want to grab that? I can put a link to that in the chat. Yeah, please do. Thanks. Charles. I'm looking at it. I'll have to dig into it a little bit more. Um, weight can be a little bit uh, finicky because of all the different things it's checking. So I'm gonna have to dig into it some more to give you a good answer. Um, and I'll let you know. All right, cool, thanks. Okay, uh, anyone else that would like to say a few words? Okay, let's move over to discussions. Uh, first up today um, is, um, Scott, that's okay. We've we've discussed that. We uh, we've discussed Travis. Uh, next up is Mark, and he wants to talk about uh, upgrade installs, ignore installation errors. Well, the truth away, is, we don't need to talk about it too much. This is more of a ping to uh, Doctor uh, Butcher. Um, the upgrade. You know how when we do operations, we check that the cluster is available and then it prints a nice error, Kubernetes cluster is not reachable. The upgrade command was forgotten. So I have a PR for that, but the handling of error is not being done in a way that I understand. Um, and there's a comment left from you. Um, and I just want to do, if you could have a quick look in the PR, just to, to, to give us a, a go in changing that because sure. uh, you seem to do error handling in a way that I didn't understand. Yeah, I, I tried looking at this code as well, and I was equally as confused. Is that 6920? That yeah. is. Yes. yes. Okay. It's it. it just digging your memory. Thank you. Uh, I think the next one's mine too. Yes. Um, we had talked about uh, printing the XDG paths in the Helm Env, and uh, Farina and Adam were going to take it offline. I was hoping you might have some news. Or did You're you right, and I totally failed to update your stuff. So um, the XDG stuff, we, we shouldn't be showing um, because it should be transparently pulled into Helm-specific variables. Because on some systems you got XDG, on others do you don't. If you start futzing with the XDG stuff in order to get what you want in it, right? Like you want more Helm plugins, you may screw up other things on your system. So we shouldn't directly expose it. We should just be a consumer of it. Um, but there should always be a Helm specific variable in its place. And there's a bunch of times where we aren't, don't have a Helm specific variable. Um, and that's the kind of thing. And so I volunteered uh, after Adam and I talked to go chase this down and do the pull requests to make sure the Helm variables are there and the cases are there and that's handled. Um, I was hoping to do that starting tomorrow or more likely next week. Does that make sense? 
I'll uh, I'll understand better the, the complexity about not existing those variable not existing on other systems when I see your your PR and then we can uh, yeah. just reject mine. Well, like uh, XDG isn't on Windows, right? Um, so, so if and, we set and it, it's going to mess up stuff. Well, no. If you alter the variables, say you're on Linux and you alter the variables, and another program goes and expects those to be there the way they are, you might end up messing with something. And it's only supposed to be consumer side. So we do. Do we just display it on Linux, which is the only place that's XDG, or do we not? And how do we handle? It gets screwy. So we need Helm specific variables for this, and the default value for them will pull from XDG if you haven't set the Helm specific version, and then we'll display the Helm ones in Helm in the Helm environment list, if that makes sense. So setting those variables to the value that's the default is dangerous. Yes. Not the default. Um, oh, if you change them off of the default. Th think of XDG and environment variables the same as home variable. Like we would not want to set home on behalf of the user, right? If it's unset? And home is just um, like a default lookup path and XDG should be the same. You know, like we, we would never um, override home for the user like mid process, especially when you're going to open up um, or you're going to spawn another process using those environment variables. Um, you would definitely want the operating system to handle that. Yeah, so for, I'm actually coming onto this and I'm getting to understand Adam and Farina's case a lot better with this one. So. A fantastic example is in Helm 2. Actually, it's like the precursor to the XDG stuff was Helm 2. We would read from the home environment variable. Um, and that would get us the Helm home uh, environment variable. Basically, that would be what we would use internally for storing all of our data, configuration plugins, and all that kind of stuff. However, when we were propagating that and passing it along to the plugin system, we wouldn't pass it as the home environment variable because that's what the user set and that's kind of overriding that. So we changed it and added that prefix, Helm Home. Um, so really this argument is to be made is the same way, is that even though if the user sets the XDG home directory on any of those three operating systems, we don't propagate that and pass that along to the plugin system. Um, we're not gonna mangle with the user's XDG uh, environment variables. Instead, we're going to pass along to the plugin system a Helm specific, like Helm config dir, Helm plugin dir, or just Helm um, data dir or something like that. So then uh, we're not mangling what the user has set in their environment um, through the through the bash environment or otherwise. If that yeah, makes and, sense. And, and if it's not cool. set, then anything's going to use the operating system default, um, including other not just Helm, um, including anything else that you're running like in a plugin. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to take more time on this. I'll, um, it's okay. I'll, I'll see with the PR. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for that. Before we go on to last issue, the last discussion item, uh, who, uh, Bridget said she's going to do notes for next week. Uh, who would like to be moderator? I think I have time. I Oh, go ahead, Adam. I volunteer as tribute. Thanks, Adam. Okay, on to the last piece of uh, business for the day. Should Helm transform API versions? Uh, so I just put the item, and this is Farina seven five seven five. Check out the pull request real quick. Is this the <coughs> request? This looks. Yeah, so the, the background to this is around, um, if I'm right on this, is around um, deprecated APIs um, and charts if they have a deprecated API and Kubernetes deprecating them in version 1.16. And if you already have deployed a particular chart prior to that with the deprecated API, then we have a problem on, on an upgrade. Uh, is yeah, that a good The solution? code of the pull request is different now than what it was when I added it to the agenda. Yeah, he's, re he's rewritten it several times at this point. Um, okay, I, I have to re-review it. Previously, he was just doing a bunch of basic transforms that was going to lead towards issues, and I'm actually not sure what it's doing anymore. And I'm not going to try to live figure it out on the call. Can I ask a question related to that? 
Does uh, Helm ensure forward compatibility? Meaning if I deploy something with Helm 3.1, does it still have to work with Helm 3.0? Because I, I thought of that reading. No. So we made this argument like back with Tiller um, a while back was that we could not guarantee that, yeah, so there's several cases where a newer version of Helm has not ensured forwards compatibility, um, whether that's updating to a newer version of Go or updating to um, newer functions and whatnot that were being introduced to the templating system. And so if you made a chart for version 3.7.0, um, you could not deploy that with Helm version or well Helm 2.7.0. You could not work with it with Helm 2.6.0 because in 2.7.0 there was a new function that was introduced to the text template language, um, and that would not work with an older version. So the same premise could be added. Um, in Matt Farina knows about this particular pull request, but Sprig is potentially introducing a new function called HT password, um, and that is potentially going to be in the next Sprig release. When that comes out, we'll be bumping Sprig to the newer release in a newer version of Helm, like say 3.2 or 3.3. That function will only work going forward from Helm version 3.3 onwards, but it will not work with Helm version 3.1 and previous. So how others have worked around this have done um, either version checks or in their chart, they could say that the tiller capability in version two would only, like this would only work with versions of Helm like 3.3 onwards. Um, so no, to answer your question, no, there's no forwards compatibility um, guarantees. There's backwards compatibility guarantees, but forwards compatibility is a lot harder to achieve. Okay. With the fact that there's no tiller, this becomes a little more tricky for two users independently using a Helm client on the same cluster. But I guess there's nothing we could do about it. Thank you. Yeah, it becomes hard because you essentially can't introduce feature releases, right? Um, in, in many different ways because two users may not have the, the new feature, right? It becomes hard to do feature releases then or impossible. Yeah, it was kind of similar to the last time when you had client and tiller. If tiller was behind the client, uh, kind of ended up in the same situation. Okay, any other items or is that us for today? I have one other thing real quick. So we talk about Helm 3 all the time, but there's this thing sitting out there called Helm 2 that we still support. Has anybody poked at it or looked at it lately? Uh, not at the Dev V2 branch, if that's what you're referring to, no. Yeah, okay. We probably should go triage and get a release uh, 2.16.2 or a 2.17 or something out um, sometime soon, probably before the conference is my guess. Just a thought. Yeah, actually, and we released Helm to, or at least the 2.15.0 or 2.16.0 release in November. Um, so I think we're about time to go for another patch release at this point. And that would yeah. be two yeah. and I think, and I think months some, after the last release. Yeah, I think there's also some stuff in there we'll have to catch. Like, I don't know if we have the, the backported fix for supporting um, the V1 API extensions. I don't think that's registered in our schema in V2. I think that was backported. If I recall, it might be in, in the dev V2 master branch, unless yeah. you unless you know otherwise. I'm just thinking in 2.16.1. I don't know if it's in, in Oh, OK, yeah. Yeah, I think it's in the dev V2 branch, but it's not in the latest patch release of 2.16. Yeah, probably not. OK, so that's a good item to write down for, um, yeah, to consider. Uh, is that it? Is that all, folks? Right. Two minutes over time. Not bad for an Irish person. Thank you all today. Um, uh, have a great day, great weekend, and we'll see you all again next week.